Welcome YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Coral Blade Grotto. This is going to be a reaction video. I did a little poll on my grammar channel in the community section and I offered four different choices uh, with which the viewer could choose to see which individual I would do a reaction video from. And by a landslide, this gentleman that I'm going to do the video about, uh, he won. His name is Romley Stewart. And as far as I know, he runs the Justinian Deception channel. Uh, he uh, has also been a guest on the Glossa channel, which this video is from. And by the way, I have not watched this video. I just picked it because it was 10 minutes long and it seems about the ideal length. And the subject matter seemed to be relevant to what I do, which is teach correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. But just so you know, this is not in any way an audit or a reaction to Romley's personality or his character or who, who he is as a man. What it has to do with mainly is a focus on the grammar and his claims about grammar and language and, and those types of things. That's what this is about because that's what I do. There's nothing personal about it at all. As a matter of fact, um, I've watched several of this man's videos over the years and He's very, he's very well informed, very obviously educated, and has uh, actually has firsthand knowledge and performance and experience in what he's talking about. Um, I don't know what success level he's had. What I do know uh, from what I've seen from his YouTube channel, Justinian Deception, is that he hasn't posted any videos up there in, in a few months, in a couple months, at least two or four, I can't remember which, and that he did have a partner or someone he was doing videos with, and that individual is actually in prison right now, I guess, or in jail. Because in one of the descriptions of the videos, Romley actually said he's not going to make any more videos at this time because he does not want to endanger his friend who is in jail. So I don't know what they're getting up to down there. Uh, but this is concerned with grammar and his claims uh, regarding such. So let's get into it. Wrong. An integral part of your research, in addition to the internet and other researchers, statutes, acts, laws, has been a number of books such as styles, manuals, and legal dictionaries. For reference from viewers, can you can you let them know which books you are mainly referring to, or those that you've found to be most helpful or insightful? Yeah. The um. The, uh, the, this book was the first book I was, was reading, but I couldn't find the glossary in it, the all uppercase text. However, that book was where the glossary was first discovered. Was it in the New Oxford Style Manual or another, another book? No, but believe it or not, there is a reference to it in this book. This is the, the New Oxford uh, Styles Manual. But this is the, the book that I was reading when I was um, speaking or asking Magistrate Pinder about the all uppercase text because I said, Mr. Pinder, who is the magistrate, I said, 
this is the book I cannot find, and this is the, the rules of, of English, of descriptive text. Okay. So to begin with, he's setting us up, uh, giving the sources of his knowledge and where he began his journey in learning what he has to share regarding grammar. So in other words, he's talking about this new Oxford style manual, which is a fiction babble styles manual written in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, babble, okay? He's talking about the rules of English. The rules of English are fiction babble rules in relation to quantum grammar, in relation to correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. It's two different domains. Keep this in mind, please. And I could not find the, um, the order case text in it, but it, it did refer to a, to a thing called a casting or casting um, the, an actor in a play. And when, when a, an actor is in a play, you, like, you, you often see the movie credits going down and all the actors are all in the all uppercase text, and which is called a cast or a casting, which again refers back to um, um, symbolism and um, engraved images, um, statues and statues, a stone, you know, cast in stone. But... Um, this was the first book, but the most important book was, of course, which we everyone knows now that's following this, is the um, Chicago Manual of Styles. And that was where the glossary was? That, yeah, and in 11144 is where the glossary is, and in 11147, which is probably the most, um, the worst part of that book or for, for the government, because it gives you an example of what Amer uh, American Sign Language or ASL is supposed to look like. Okay, so now he's just uh, gone over to the Chicago Manual of Styles. And he just said is to give uh, what is it, it gives closure as to what American Sign Language is supposed to look like. So you're hearing it. He is giving authority to what he's saying to a fiction styles manual known as the Chicago Manual of Styles. His rules of grammar that govern his construct, he's taken from a fiction source. You understand what I'm saying to you? He's giving authority to the governance of his construct to a Chicago Manual of Styles. It also states that um sign language, the American sign language, which is the all uppercase text, follows the grammatical rules of Latin and not the grammatical rules of English. So that's where you get your split in the languages, two languages on one, one document making it corrupted. Well, now this is uh, really strange. If you go on the net and put in ancient Latin, because ancient Latin is the official language of the Vatican, it's the real thing. And you will notice that in, in, um, when you see ancient Latin, it's on the net. You just go in there and have a look at the pictures of ancient Latin. It's the all uppercase words. But be between the words, there's a little triangle or a mark or a circle or some sort of a, a mark that sits in between the words. So if this was going to read New Oxford Styles Manual, it would have New, um, a mark, Oxford, a mark, Styles, a mark, manual. It wouldn't have a mark here. So what joins the side? Okay. So there's a little bit more going on here than what he's, and like in the context of what he's saying, I understand what he's saying. Now he has given jurisdiction to what he's talking about to ancient Latin, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. Latin is full of adverbs. The title of this book that he just gave the example to is written, the text is centered. So you can see all the breaks in the continuance of the evidence. So if you were to actually syntax that title, well, if I were to actually syntax the title, New Oxford Style Manual, it would just be four, 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 because each of those words is standing by itself with excessive spacing in between it and the next word. You understand? 
Now, in correct sentence structure, it would be left justified. All right, without excessive spacing. If there's excessive spacing, it's because there's a full stop, and then you're moving on to the next claim or the next inf bit of information. Now, if you want to center the text, if you want to justify it left and right, then you would necessarily have to give closure to that in your document contract postal vessel court venue, that that is what you're doing. Perhaps for the ease of the reading, you know, of the viewership, you left and right justify it, and that explains the excessive spacing. And then that takes out the excessive spacing because you as the authority of your construct have authorized it to be so. You have not given jurisdiction to a Chicago styles manual. You have not given jurisdiction to a new Oxford style manual. You are the authority of that contract. Now, if someone chooses, as Romley has, to allow a fiction entity or source to control and govern his grammatical construct, that's entirely up to you. That's what we call using fiction against fiction, which is what he does. Because, I mean, I don't know if, he, if he's even heard of correct sentence structure, uh, but by what he's saying, he certainly, if he knows about it, he certainly doesn't know much about it because he has not mentioned it or any of the, the uh, mechanics involved in it. But I just want to point that out. He is giving jurisdiction to the fiction for his grammatical construct. Lines together is the mark between the signs. So that's the true, um, that's called ancient Latin. And then, so then English is the, the words written in English, one rest between the two words constitutes the joinder between the two words, whereas one rest and a full stop, or a period, whatever it's called, or two rests constitutes a break between the two words. So if you've got a sentence, as it comes to the end of the sentence, you can either put a full stop and one rest, or you can just put two rests, and you'll start to find that on your birth certificates, where your Christian name is there, and then you have two rests, which is another trick on the birth certificate. So I'd like to clear this part up, which doesn't really have to do with the grammar. He's talking about your birth certificate. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I don't have a birth certificate that is mine because I had nothing to do with that contract. Contract is by consent. Okay. That's the beauty of contract. I did not authorize nor create any birth certificate. I didn't pop out of the womb. I didn't come out, you know, from my mother and come into the hospital room and say, hey, get the pen and paper, get that typewriter ready, get that key queued up here. Come on, we're going to create my birth certificate here. And then I, I put my little thumbprint on there and then I autograph it and copyright copy claim. And now I've created my own birth certificate. I've authorized it. It's my contract, my bill, the lading, whatever, document, contract, postal, vessel, court, venue with the stamp and the flag and all that stuff. No, I didn't do that. No baby that I know of has ever done that. Therefore, when a baby is born physically onto the earth, that contract, that birth certificate has nothing to do with them. It has to do with other contract parties. You know, obviously through the parents, most times, majority of the times through nascience, they participate with it, but it has nothing to do with that being, that live creature, because they didn't authorize it. They didn't autograph it, nothing. So it has nothing to do with them. So unless you created that piece of paper, it is not your birth certificate. Before the surname comes, which breaks the jurisdiction between the two, breaks the sentence. So um, there is a thing called ancient Latin, which is the official language of the Vatican. And then there's, English, which is the official language of common law. But what dog Latin is, is the corruption of, of the uh, tree of the style. Well, this is dog Latin here. Think about that in a logical sense. All right. Dog Latin is a corruption of an already corrupted grammar. Isn't that funny? It's corruption built on corruption, built on corruption, built on corruption. 
where they remove the mark between the two and that then reads new and Oxford and styles and manual and even here it would be assumed to read the world's most trusted reference books but in actual fact it, grammatically this is reading the and worlds in actual fact it says nothing there are no facts on the screen right now it's all adverb verb adjective pronoun and most and trusted and re reference and books these signs are not drawn together and that is the corruption in the text and that's called dog latin or debased latin and the word debased is what um, grammatically renders this as criminal and immoral debased just off the top of my head from parsing things de means no a base is a base and ed is past tense so it's something that happened in the past and it's no so there's no base to it and it happened in the past so it doesn't really matter because it's tricking people deceiving people into thinking this reads something when in actual fact it's just a picture it's just a sign it's pretty but it reads absolutely nothing how does how does the appearance the visual appearance of dog latin compared to ancient latin if, if ancient latin is the legitimate language of the vatican or the legitimate form of latin how, how do they differ is is it is it the joinders is, is it it's just the mark between the um, signs the punk so they seem to be giving jurisdiction or an authority to ancient latin which is a adverb verb adjective pronoun form of fiction babble which is very interesting that they would do that. And he just, the guy, other guy just said legal, which again, legal has nothing to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. It's all a fiction construct, which makes sense. So what Romley is doing is he's promulgating fiction babble uh, and fiction constructs here. Punctuation mark? Yes, that's the punctuation mark. Now, in American Sign Language, they use a hyphen. So just the standard hyphen is what's used when you use it. And that's according to the um, uh, the Ooh, Chicago that, Manual of Styles. And Chicago. it gives... This, it, Again, he's giving authority to a fiction styles manual. That is the authority of his knowledge. The Chicago Manual of Styles. Yeah. So it gives you the sample of it. So it's only these couple of books that we've really that's the book i tried to find and the magistrates didn't want to answer the question but then seven years later and the help of uh, rowan laurian uh he i narrowed it down to that book because there's two books there's two there's also the pittsburgh manual of styles and the reason why i went to the pittsburgh is because i traced uh, back traced from justinian or the the uh, roman emperors it came at the uh, 1200 the, the line in the united states something happened with the pope in around 1250 and they wound up in switzerland which is strange because switzerland is now the world bankers for switzerland then they moved from, from switzerland switzerland a, a family of them moved down into pittsburgh and then they became the controllers and the um the, uh, the controllers of the united states of america but that bloodline which is i think it's a, it's a, a jewish I would definitely, you know, this doesn't have to do with the, the correct sentence structure per se, but it's very interesting, these claims that he's making. Um, I've watched a few of his videos and I've never seen him certify these claims or offer sources. So I guess if someone was interested in this, interested enough, motivated enough to search it out themselves, um, to find out if what he's saying is true or not true. That's pretty interesting though, no doubt. Swiss German bloodline that moved down into the United States. The reason why I thought it was the Pittsburgh is because that's where they settled. And it's also where the Yale University that, that teaches the, um, the, the, uh, the grammar, or the, the art or the science of grammar. It's taught at the Yale University, which is in Pittsburgh and Yale puts out. The art or science of grammar. Those are two completely different things. I mean, grammar can be used as art, 
as in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, as in the Chicago manual styles that he's always referring to here, or it can be also used as a science when we talk about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, technology. The pre presidents of the United States, which are really the presidents of the bank, and um, also all the, the bankers of the United States, the big bankers, come from Yale because Yale is the is the college that teaches the science science of English. Are you referring to the Skull and Bones Society? So, the Skull and Bones Society is just down the road. So it's not at the Yale University, but it's a, probably a couple of blocks away from it. And that's uh, the, the secret society or the, the Illumini, they call it, the illuminated. Um, it started with the Illumini of the Yale uh, University in the 1800s or something. But, but the, the um, Skull and Bones goes back to the Thule Society in Germany. And I think uh, Hitler was a, a member of the Thule Society, which was the Skull and Bones Society. That's why Hitler wore the little, the, 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 the skull and bones or the, the skull on his cap. The death's head symbol? Yeah, uh, yeah the pirate symbol. That's all it was, just the skull and bones. The, it was the Jolly Roger. And that's what's on the, um, the Yale, what was it, the, the Skull and Bones Society. It's just simply the Jolly Roger. Now the 3T2 I, I mentioned before, which is the number on the bottom of the um, of that symbol, it's it refers to in the Bible it's uh, three three two in Genesis. It talks about the the two trees, the debtors, which is uh, if you're on if you're the debtor you can't be the creditor. But it's also if you if you look at the um, United States Citizens Act, the United States Citizens Act is Citizens Act three two two which is another strange coincidence. So what it, it could be saying, whereas Hitler was honorable and he, as he in so-called invaded these other countries, he wore the, the pirate symbol on his uniform. So he walked in with the pirate flag and said, we are corporate foreign pirates. But so the people accepted them as they were taking over countries. But what the United States is doing, which is the same system as the, is the, um, Civil society was is Hitler because I think it was Hitler was funded by the United States corporations. Um, they fly the flag through the United States Citizens Act, three two two, which is really the the Skull and Bones Society, which is the Skull and Bones with the three two two, which is the, the same number as the United States Citizens Act, and the United States and the United States of America are two very different things. So um, it, it gets a little bit deep. When he says there are two different things, he's talking about on paper, pretty much. And as far as his claims about the Thule Society and Skull and Bones, I have no way of certifying any of that. It's kind of too uh, far out there at this moment. I'm more into the practical matters of the grammar, which he's claiming. And um, I just have to say that his use of the grammar, if you look at his other videos, when he talks about glossa, dog Latin, and things like that, these are all fiction constructs. These are all fiction concepts. It all comes from fiction. So, well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this out, and then I'll give a little commentary the mystical at the stuff end. Say that, um, you know, Jordan Maxwell, he, he know these sort of things. Uh, there's some things he doesn't like to comment on too. Jordan Maxwell. As I said before, what he wouldn't comment on is probably is the, the grammatical tricks that, or the science of the English that's been used. All right. Thank you for joining me for this. I'll give a little commentary at the end here. Again, this is nothing personal against Romley Stewart. It's not meant as any sort of disrespect or anything like that. Uh, it's just talking about the grammar, solely the grammar and the tricks inherent in such. All right, so what he does, to the best of my perceptions, my cognition, is that he uses fiction against fiction. He has admitted it's uh, such. The Chicago Manual of Styles is his authority over what he's sharing with you. As he's sharing this knowledge with you on his other videos, as well as this one, but more in depth on other ones, He's giving the Chicago Manual of Styles as his source, as his certification of what he's saying. And the Chicago Styles Manual is written in fiction, babble, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun.
So we've just certified that Romley Stewart is giving jurisdiction to the fiction system for his grammar conveyances. Okay. In another video that he does, he makes a comment that it took him seven years to find this out about the glossa thing, the all caps thing. Uh, the all caps that are the same size as the lowercase and or uh, the size of an uppercase or with hyphens or without hyphens, whatever, whatever it was he was talking about. He said it was like finding a needle in a haystack. That is exactly, that is exactly inherent of the fiction system. The fiction system can continuously create multiple thousands, billions of haystacks with needles in them. And you can run around behind it your whole life, searching through these multiple haystacks, looking for those needles as he has, and then using it for whatever end or purpose, using the fiction against the fiction. Because fiction can never meet fact. Period. End of story. This is what drew me to correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar in 2017 because I knew inherently, I had an intuition that if I learned this, I wouldn't need to go chasing through haystacks anymore looking for needles. Because I had just found a big ass blower that when I turned it on, it would just blow those haystacks out and clean the whole area. And then all that would be left would be a geometric level plane field, clean and clear for safe navigation. And that's pretty much the function of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Now, I would re be uh, negligent if I didn't say, you know, if this man, Romley Stewart, watches this video, you're more than welcome to contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And... You can apply for a grammar workshop so that you can find out what quantum grammar is all about. Because I think you'd really dig it. I really do. I think you'd dig it. If you have a logical and open mind with the humility, rule one, rule equal, honor, grace, peace, neutrality, I'm sure this stuff would appeal to you for sure. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is an addendum to the video you just watched. Now, the video was created about, I don't know, four or five months ago, half a year ago, and I published on my Coral Blade Grotto channel. As you may or may not know, I have now taken much of the Coral Blade Grotto material and transferred it over to my grammar channel, which is the channel you're watching right now. Now, what happened when I published this video is I got a lot of people coming on to my channel and commenting or emailing me. Uh, basically, I guess I would classify them as followers or acolytes of, of the Romley Stewart uh, fan club. Defending him or, or whatever. And actually, Romley Stewart himself came out and commented on the video saying something to the effect of, my name is Romley Stewart and I make no claims. Which to me was humorous because if someone comes out saying they make no claims, they're actually making a claim by not making a claim. They're making a claim of no claim. So that's a, a dichotomy in and of itself. So my point in putting this addendum on here is to tell you individuals who are followers of Romley Stewart and enjoy his work. I mean, I enjoy his work too. It's very interesting. I've you know, as I've shared in other places, uh, I kind of follow the same path that, that he kind of took. I mean, I went to school, uh, to college, you know, extra school, so to speak, to, uh, I was an English major and I learned a lot about the grammar and I've been studying parse and etymology since my freshman year in high school. So that's a very long time. So when I came upon correct sentence structure, I saw it for what it was, an amazing, miraculous technology that if one actually takes the time to sit down and learn it, is super, I mean, super califragilistic, potent, no doubt about it. And I find that those individuals who came on the comments and who emailed me and Romley himself, who critique it, 
or make judgments about it don't know the first thing about it. They just don't. They don't know how to use it. They just feel they're in a position to judge it even though they don't know anything about it. It's kind of like when someone is perhaps, you know, as, as human beings, we tend to drift towards the emotion of fear when we see something we don't know about or don't have closure on, you become afraid of it. Kind of like the whole death thing, you know, people are afraid of death, so what happened? You know, in my opinion, and this is an opinion, the control system created this thing called religion or monotheism or any of the other religions, polytheism, to capitalize on that fear of death so that they could control people in a certain way throughout life where it actually matters based upon fear of something that hasn't happened, which is death, i.e. fear of the unknown. So they could control the known based on a fear of the unknown. So that's kind of like what I, I, I compare this to. People who don't know about correct sentence structure and they haven't learned it or don't want to learn it for whatever reason will just, you know, a lot of times dismiss it or, or uh, be very condescending towards it, very derisive of it and make judges, judgments upon it, which if you know anything about rule one, rule equal judge mechanics is a violation of judge mechanics because you have to know the whole story. You have to know what it is you're talking about. So long story short, I did offer Romley a video consultation and I offered for him to contact me if he wanted to know more about quantum grammar, which he obviously doesn't know anything about. And instead of meeting me on the geometric level playing field of communication, he decided to basically what we would call spam the same exact comment across all these social media platforms uh, on my YouTube channel and, and so on and so forth, rather than contacting me and meeting me on the geometric level playing field of contract. As a kuleana to my video, of course, I'm the one that, that sort of reached out by putting this particular video out. And instead of, you know, wanting to meet me in a video consultation or in a video communication, eye to eye, face to face, man to man, he chose to just spam the same comment across all media platforms and be done with it. And that's fine. And I found that across the board, this is usually what happens when I try to offer a gift of a tutorship or a gift of education to someone. It usually is met with this sort of uh, reaction. So it is what it is. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, uh, if you want to learn this stuff, if you want to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, I myself have been teaching it to hundreds of people all over the earth for the last five years. There are over 400 videos on this YouTube channel uh, that you can study or you can contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and you can apply for a confidential one hour grammar workshop. Thank you.